Good morning. This is Tracy Hales Bass, right on Four Corners on KSJE 90.9 FM. This morning I'm talking to Jack Yerby, the author of The Secret of the Haunted House and other books. Good morning, Jack. Good morning. How are you today? Pretty good. Good. Thanks for coming into the studio to talk about your book. My pleasure. So this is for young adults. Right, right. Mainly um, junior high, middle school age students. And you really particularly want to reach young men. Yes, I noticed that when I was teaching English that uh, we lost the boys at about junior high age to reading. And it's not because they don't like to read, but a lot of the literature for that age group is seems to be aimed at girls. Right. So I wanted to get something that boys would be interesting in. And um, I know when I was uh, that age, I loved mysteries. Right. And so this is a mystery without necessarily a murder mystery, mm-hmm. because you don't want necessarily death and mayhem in a, in a young adult book. Yeah, so The Secret of the Haunted House. Um, well, first of all, why don't you just give our audience a synopsis of what the book is about? Well, it's um, based on some real kids that uh, lived here in the Farmington area in a trailer. And across the the street from it, there was a burned down haunted uh, house that they had the youngest kid convinced was haunted. And their mom would always talk about the shenanigans that the older kids did trying to get James to go over into the haunted house. And I said, I've got to write this up. So I started writing and the story just kind of created itself. I didn't have it planned out ahead of time. It just kind of grew in the telling. And the um, it's the story of a haunted, of a house that James keeps seeing a light and he convinces his older brothers that it's haunted and so they start exploring it looking for the ghost and in the process they uh, find that it's being used by an escaped convict who's looking for a treasure and in the end of the book they they capture the convict and discover the treasure and in the process of that they drive their single mother crazy. Oh, yes, they do. Uh, <laughs> and that's based on me and my three brothers driving my parents crazy. <laughs> a lot of the shenanigans that they pulled on each other, I have pulled on my brothers that they pulled on me. That's great. It was very funny. And they are always doing something. Right. And you really capture the difference in the characters. And James is really bright. Kenny yep. is. Kenny was the bright one. That's right. And James is the youngest, and Kenny's the yeah. smart one. James's problem is that he's honest to a fault, even to the point of getting into trouble because of it, and very often got his older siblings into trouble by being honest. And you involve their next-door neighbor. Right. Uh, their next-door neighbor is Mrs. Sosi, a Navajo lady, and I introduced her to try and give just a little bit of Navajo culture to the book so that a reader from let's say back east or out on the west coast mm-hmm. that knows nothing about Navajos would learn a little bit about Navajo culture. Yeah, she's a very believable um, character also and her little dog. Right, right. Who's a character in himself. Yeah. <laughs> so um, take a minute and read for us a little bit out of The okay. Secret of the Haunted House. Kenny sat bolt upright in his bed as Mike, Katie, and James all burst into his bedroom, turning on the lights and yelling at the top of their lungs, Wake up, Kenny! We got one! We got one! He looked at his three siblings with an open mouth, trying to shake off the sleep and make sense of what they were yelling at him. He just sat there in bed, confused, until Mike came over and lifted up his gunny sack. Kenny saw that he was holding it by the neck while the belly roiled as it as something large wiggled and thrashed to get out. Dump it out, Mike, yelled James excitedly. Let's see it. What's going on in here, yelled their mom as Mike upended the gunny sack. 
At that moment, several things happened at once. Out of the sack plopped an owl with a dead mouse in its claw, right on the small rug in front of the bunk beds. Katie screamed at the sight of the dead mouse. Mike just stood there surprised that his prize was only an owl and not a snipe. James made a dive for the rug in an attempt to grab the owl, just as it leaped into the air and flew for the open bedroom window. And their mom bellowed at the top of her lungs, Get that thing out of my house before it poops on something. But instead of pooping, the owl slammed into the screen covering the open window and fell to the floor, dazed. James landed on the now empty rug, which slid across the slick floor, the dead mouse on the top of his head, which the owl had dropped in its sudden flight for freedom. He and the rug stopped abruptly when they hit Katie's legs. The rug's sudden stop threw the dead mouse off James' head and onto Katie's foot. She began dancing around frantically, trying to throw it off her feet. She didn't realize that her first wild kick had launched it into the air. So thinking that the mouse was still on her foot, she jumped around the room like the time she had talked James into believing that a hornet's nest was a piñata. <laughs> he had whacked it and the hornets had gotten into her hair. The mouse sailed through the air and bounced off Mike's chest. He began to thrash around trying to brush it off, thinking it was still on him. And their mom kept screaming, Get that owl out of here! Get it out of here! Kenny just sat in the middle of the bed, watching the antics of his family, who had suddenly gone stark, raving mad. (laughs) So funny. And the book is full of action like that. The kids pulling tricks on each other right it's great (laughs) so what um and and so i guess that's what you said that you had heard these guys these boys that you know talking about this right right now the shenanigans like that are made up Mm -hmm. they're mainly the the real boys were trying to get little james to go over to what they said was the haunted house but i turned that around in the book and james thinks it's haunted and his older brothers don't believe him. Right. So. And Mike is an old brother, and then Katie is the older sister. Right, right. So there's right. the four of them. Right. Yeah, right. they got in big trouble right. for that one, that antic that you just read. Right. <laughs> Mom was not happy about that. No, no she wasn't. So now that um, the secret of the haunted house is out, what is the next book? I'm working on um, another mystery that's based loosely on an old Nancy Drew mystery, Mm -hmm. but it's modernized. Um, I've made the main character not Nancy Drew, but again, a couple of boys that I knew. uh, So they have their own personality. Right. And it's the old secret of the old clock. The secret of the old clock. Right. Is the working title. Right. And the... um, and it has it takes place here in New Mexico in Flora Vista, uh, and I've given the boy made it modern. I've given the boys um, laptops, uh, cell phones, computers, video games. Um, taking it out of the 1930s when the original story was written. right, right. Yeah. You put it modernized. Modern, but the the mystery they're trying to uh, solve is the same. And the steps they go through to solve it are the same. Oh. It's just uh, in a modern setting with modern characters. And I remember reading um, The Hardy Boys when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And I could never keep uh, Joe and his brother separate. They just, they were so shallow characters. Mm-hmm. Right. And um, by basing my two characters on real boys. Right. Um, they had their own distinct personality, mm-hmm. and um, hopefully they, the reader will be able to keep them separate. Well, I know that in um, The Haunted House, they're definitely distinct characters. Right. And these days, characters are so important, I think, more than it used to be. Right, right, yeah. Hopefully, young, um, early teenage kids can relate to some of these characters with the problems that they're going through and, and the right. f- family dynamics 
Right. You know, sibling rivalry and, and what have you. So you're a big, did you read the Nancy Drew books also? Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. And um, so that's what I'd like to do is take some of those mysteries, mm-hmm. rewrite them with modern characters, um, and basically reintroduce them. Great. So how long did it take you to write The Haunted House? Oh, I've worked on it piecemeal probably for about four or five years. Okay. Working on maybe one day a week. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now I've, I've been working on the, my current book probably for about two years, but again, working just a couple of days a week. Right. And um, what is your writing process? Well, uh, the, f- um, the Secret of the Haunted House kind of grew into telling. Uh-huh. I really had no idea what the story would uh, would be when I started writing it. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to write some of the antics that I was hearing. Um, and then I was kind of surprised when it developed into a full book. The old Secret of the Old Clock is um, already had already been written, so there was a plot structure already. Right. And the steps to that Nancy Drew goes through to solve the the mystery were already outlined for me. All I did was fill in, develop the characters more. Great. So you had kind of an outline already. Right. Right. Interesting way to write. Yeah. Well, that's the way some a lot of people do is that they will outline a a story. Yes. Um, and especially mystery stories, you almost have to do that so that you know where you're going to leave clues and what the hints are. That's true. And other writers do it by the seat of their pants. They just start writing. Mm-hmm. And they have no idea where the story is going to go. That's true. Right. So it depends on the, the writer, what, you know, how their creative juices are stirring. And. It depends on the story, too, it sounds like, because each one could be different, as it was in your case. Right, right. Uh, So what's on the agenda after the old clock? I don't know. I may reintroduce um, James and Kenny. Oh, Um, from Haunted House. From the Haunted House. Um, I travel to Paris Mm -hmm. quite often, and I know the city really well. And so I was thinking that I have a mystery where... Um, James, there's a famous gargoyle on the top of Notre Dame Cathedral. Oh, yes. And it talks to James, but nobody believes that it's alive. And it witnessed the theft of the Mona Lisa. Oh. And so they would be running around Paris looking for the Mona Lisa. And in the process, I would use that to talk about Paris, some of the famous monuments, and what you mm-hmm. would find there if you went to visit it. You used to teach French, right? Yeah, I'm a retired French teacher in oh, Farmington so. High. So you know a lot about that. Right, right. And I and I spent a summer there. How so fun. I, I know the city really well. Right. Oh, that sounds fascinating. Yeah. And it would be an opportunity to have your audience learn, like you said, yeah. about right. Paris and some of its sightings and yeah and there's a lot of places in paris that i go and visit and i've learned about that the average tourist never sees all right yeah and that would be something that would be great to uh introduce the kids to. right right so um i understand that you are part of a writer's group how important is that it's really important because um, I like other people to read my writing and mm-hmm. give me critical comments about what they like and what they don't like right. about it. Right. If um, if I have just my friends read it, they're going to be polite and not say anything honest. Mm-hmm. They're going to they don't want to hurt my feelings. Whereas a stranger doesn't mind doing that. <laughs> Which is what I want. Right, I understand, yes. And um, so I, I'm part of a writer's group, and then we share chapters, mm-hmm. and I do the same. I do the critiquing for them, too. Great. So everybody gets it, too. Right. Oh, because this is for young adults, and particularly boys, have you had feedback from? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, before it was published, um, 
I had a friend of mine who teaches fifth or sixth grade uh-huh. in the Colorado area, up in um, Denver somewhere. Mm-hmm. And she took it to her class. Oh, good. Um, and she would read them a chapter a day. Oh, good. After, re- after recess. And it got to the point where when she would end at the chapter, they would beg for her to keep going. They did not want her to <laughs> stop. And then after the book was over, she had them write down what they liked best about it. Oh, good. And, and she sent me that. So oh. that was great feedback. That would be. That's from the source. Right, right. From your audience. Yeah. Did you make any changes or anything because of that feedback? No, it was mainly um, areas that they said don't change. Ah. Um, but I did have other adults read it for clarity, for um, pacing, mm-hmm. and they gave me some feedback, and I, and I made some changes with that, too. Great. Don't tell me about the publishing of it. That was the hard part. Mm-hmm. Um, I kept sending out the, the two. Usually, they wanted two or three chapters, right. um, um, either emailed or mailed to them. And I've got fifty-seven rejection letters before I finally had <laughs> a publisher, small publisher in Texas, mm-hmm. who wanted it. And it was funny because there was another publisher in the Denver area that um, when I sent in the first three chapters, she gave it to her daughter, who was about 12 years old, to read. Perfect. The daughter wanted to read the rest of the book. And because of that, the mom, who owned the publishing company, said, send us the whole manuscript. And so I did, and then she was going to offer me a contract to publish it, Mm -hmm. and it arrived um, the day before the weekend of the 4th of July. The 4th of July was on a weekend, Uh but she didn't put enough postage on it, on the contract. And so when I got the contract for the people who did publish Mm -hmm. it, I also got a note from the post office saying, you've got another letter with postage due, seven cents postage due. Oh, my gosh. Did not know who that was. So right. when I opened up the the actual contract from the Texas publisher, mm-hmm. I said, well, I'm going to grab it. Yeah. And so I signed the contract and put it in the mail. And I went down to make to the post office to mail it and then picked up the other letter that had the postage due. And it was the second contract. Oh. Oh. So I had. It's amazing how that happened. Isn't I had that? I had two contracts for after fifty seven rejections. Yeah, after yeah. But that's what happens. A lot of rejections to, to gets to that right. acceptance. Right. Right. Well, isn't that funny? So is this same publisher going with the? No, because I wasn't really quite satisfied with them. So I'm going to look for a bigger publisher with mm-hmm. a little bit better distribution. Good. So, Jack, do you have a website or a place that the audience can go and um, find your books? And the the haunted house is on Amazon. Okay. So, if you just um, do a search for "The Secret of the Haunted House" by Jack Yerby, mm-hmm. it'll come up. Okay. Um, and that's pro- and I'll also have the the other one, okay. probably. Once it's once it, the publishing contract expires. Great. Great. Well, we look forward to that. And we still have some time. Is there anything else you'd like to read out of this? Not without spoiling the... Oh, we can't spoil the ending. No. 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 I really like, though, how it suddenly takes on an, uh, a more mysterious slant, an almost dangerous slant at the end, but we won't tell folks right. about that. Right, right. Here's another short selection. Great. Mrs. Sosi, here's your gunny sacks back, said Kenny, early the next morning, handing his neighbor her sacks. Did you catch any snipeses, she cackled. Well, yeah, kind of. Yeah, Mike caught an owl and a mouse, said James, interrupting his brother. 
He thought it was a snipe, and he brought it into the house where it got loose. We spent all night chasing it. Mrs. Sosie looked at James with a shocked look. There was a mouse in the house? Both boys nodded their heads. Oh, that bad. Very bad. Why's that? asked Kenny. The owl bring the bad news. Or bad news happens after that one comes by. Kenny noticed that Mrs. Sosie was getting agitated, and her English showed it. What kind of bad things, said James. He didn't notice how talk about the owl upset their neighbor. Kenny poked him in the ribs, trying to get him to change the subject. Sometimes death comes to the house, or sometimes bad money troubles come. She shook her head sadly. Well, we got it to fly out without being hurt, said Kenny. That good, she said, her voice still nervous. Maybe the trouble be a little one. It had a dead mouse in its claw, said James. You want to see it? And he removed the lid from an empty plastic coffee can and thrust it under her nose. Mrs. Sosi jerked her head back from the can. Don't worry, it's dead, James said, still holding it in front of her. See? Mrs. Sosi slowly peeked into the container, then backed away from it like it held a rattlesnake. That the deer mouth. It gots, you gots to burn it right away and burn the clothes it touched. What for, said James. Is that a deer mouse? asked Kenny. He took the can from his little brother and carefully snapped the lid back on it. Mrs. Sosi nodded her head, careful to keep her distance from the boys and their coffee can. People get sick and die from the deer mouse. When it runs over the body in the bed, you burn the clothes and the blankets you were sleeping in. That the deer way. Deer mice spread hantavirus, Kenny said, turning to his brother. We've got to wash our hands and burn this mouse. Was that the one in the gunny sack with the owl? She asked, pointing with her lips to the mouse in the can. Again, both boys nodded their heads. A look of shock hit Mrs. Sosie's face, and she dropped the three gunny sacks she was holding. You stay here, she said as she turned and hurried inside as fast as her stooped body would allow. A few moments later, she came back out with a box of wooden matches in her hand. She took a stick lying on the ground that James often used to play catch the rag with ginger sap. Carefully, Mrs. Sosie used it to unfold the top sack and spread it out flat on the ground, away from the other two. We gots to burn them. Next, she lit a match, touched it to the corner of the sack she had just unfolded. She started the fire at the upwind edge so that the slight breeze carried the flames downwind, setting the whole sack on fire. Once the flames were going steadily, she used the stick to put the second gunny sack on the burning one. She was very careful not to touch any part of it with her hands. She then pointed with her lips to Kenny holding the can containing the dead deer mouse. He poured the mouse out of the can and on top of the two burning sacks. Did that one touch the clothes? She asked again, lip pointing to the burning mouse. Yeah, it landed on Katie's shoe, Kenny said after a moment's thought. And she kicked it on Mike. It hit his t-shirt. We gots to burn those ones, too, Mrs. Sosie said. With her stick, she placed the third gunny sack on the mouse and the two already on fire. Kenny noticed that she left the stick in the flames a little longer than necessary. He guessed she was burning any hantavirus germs that might have gotten on it. Here, take this one to carry the shoe and shirt outside to burn she said, handing the stick to Kenny. He took it from her and hurried inside the house to get the contaminated clothing. Several minutes later, he reappeared carrying a large paper bag. I used the stick to put the shoe and the t-shirt in this bag. We can burn them all up together. He put the bag on the almost dead flames of the burning sacks. James and Mrs. Sosie jumped back in surprise when the bag burst into huge flames with a sudden whoosh. I figured that hunter virus can't live in gasoline, so I poured some on the shoe and t-shirt to make them burn faster, too. As they watched the last of the diseased clothing go up in flames, James said to Mrs. Sosi, We seen the ghost again last night. All three of us this time. Me, Mike, and Katie. You didn't tell me that, said Kenny, 
so surprised he didn't correct his brother's grammar. He was too annoyed at not being told. Well, we were pretty busy getting that owl out of the house, if you remember. Where'd you see it? This time, Kenny sounded a bit less agitated. He figured the fun of knowing that his sibling spent part of the night on a wild goose chase was worth not being around to see the ghost. It was in the kitchen part of the ruins again, but it heard us talking and disappeared, James said. We went over there looking for it, but it was gone when we got there. Exactly where were you when you saw it? Where did you put Katie in the trees? That's not very far from the kitchen side of the house. Kenny paused as he tried to visualize the events of the last night. How soon after you saw it did you go over to it? Right away. But it heard us talking and disappeared. Mike headed over as soon as he seen the light over there. Me and Katie followed right behind him. Hmm. It wouldn't take but a second to get over there. How did it disappear so quickly? Just at that moment, Katie and Mike came outside. Mike was shirtless and Katie was barefoot. Have you guys seen in my shoes or my t-shirt? <laughs> nope, answered Kenny before James could get them into trouble with his honesty. Did you ask Mom? Maybe the owl flew off with them. <laughs> we knew he'd get caught for that one. <laughs> I really like how you put so much detail into the actions that Thanks. really put you right there on the scene. Yeah. Very good. Did you have fun writing them? Oh, I did. I, I enjoy it. Good. Good. Yeah. And do the boys, or is it the whole family that you you knew? Right, right, yeah. Have they read it? Um, they have moved away by the time I've oh. finished it. Uh, they're now in their 20s. They're no longer yeah, kids. Yeah, that happens, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that they'd appreciate it. Right, right. That is very good. Well, we're just about out of time. Okay. Anything else you want to add? No, I think um, if it, it, it would make a great present. It so. would. If somebody wants to get a copy, it's available on Amazon, The Secret of the Haunted House by Jack Yerby. Great. Easy to find and very readable. And yeah, I agree. It's great for the boys. Get them reading again. Right. Good enough. Well, thank you for coming in, You're Jack. You're quite welcome. This is Tracy Hales Vass with Right on Four Corners. I've been talking to Jack Yerby author of The Secret of the Haunted House, and about his new book about the old clock. This is KSJE 90.9 FM, Farmington, New Mexico.